A primal vortex. All vibrations stem from the rotation or distortion of this greatest center. Just a note, this drawing is not to scale as the rotation rate of the Earth's great day is 9,460,800 times greater than our human experience. This spiral holds all experiences of all sizes, from infinitely large to infinitely small, all a function of a spiraling inward related to a Fibonacci spiral of inward drifting, as we, the harmonizers of the fifth dimension, strive for harmony within this fluid. Let's now take a closer look at this tidally locked vortex that contains all conscious experiences. Tidally locked vortex of the fifth dimension. In the drawing above, each sphere represents a local sphere of influence of the fifth dimension, which is relative to the scale of mind perceiving reality. It could be the mind of a human, the earth, the solar system, and even a galaxy. Either way, there are local spheres as this vortex stems from zero to infinity. The purple route indicates the center of influence for the mind within the tidally locked fluid as the system orbits. The sphere on the route represents our maximum vibration of influence determined by the center of, in quotes, mass of the local system. For example, for a human day of 24 hours, the red sphere will orbit once every 24 hours. For the Earth's day of 25,920 years, the local sphere would orbit once every 25,920 years. For the human, the yellow sphere would have a 12-hour orbit, the green sphere would have a 6-hour orbit, and the blue sphere would have a 3-hour orbit. When comparing the vortex to Earth's precessional cycle, the yellow sphere would have a 12,960-year orbit, the green sphere would have a 6,480-year orbit, and the blue sphere would have a 3,240-year orbit. This same system also applies to our 185-day alignment as well as our 2029-year alignment. It applies to every and all alignments within creation drifting inwards as well. This means it also influences our hourly alignment as well as the one second alignment. A grand clock. Let's now take a closer look at this system and relate our center of influence to the times and the circadian rhythm. For this, we will start at midnight. Starting at midnight, you can see that all of the spheres are aligned on the left side of the vortex. As the full 360 degree circle is made by the red sphere, the inner spheres rotate accordingly in a 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 relationship. Each drawing represents a change of 22 and a half degrees of arc for the red sphere, 45 degrees of arc for the yellow sphere, 90 degrees of arc for the green sphere, and 180 degrees of arc for the blue sphere. The sphere on the purple path is red for both these drawings and symbolizes that the main vibration of influence during these modes of alignment. In the Yuga system, this would represent the Kali Yin. In the Law of One, this would represent the red ray energy centers. In the Zodiac, this would represent the age of Aries, as we are currently on the half of the orbit that is drifting inwards. For simplicity, we will say midnight is the turning point of our orbit, although it is closer to 1245 AM. Let's now rotate our clock by 22 and a half degrees. In the drawing relating to 3 AM, we have now shifted from the delta harmonic to the theta inward harmonic, and the sphere on the purple path is yellow, as the center of our influence may be the center of mass of these fifth dimensional spheres. The red sphere is now at 45 degrees from the starting point, the yellow sphere is at 90 degrees from start, the green sphere is at 180 degrees, and the blue sphere has done one complete orbit. In the Yuga system, this could be considered Wapara in. In the Law of One, this would be yellow ray energy centers. In the Ages of the Zodiac, we would be in Pisces. The drawing relating to 4.30 AM shows the transition from theta brain harmony to alpha brain harmony as we continue to drift inwards. This would be significant of the change from Dwapara in to Tetra in, and the change from yellow ray energy centers to green ray energy centers. It also represents the shifting from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. This is our current location on the clock in relationship to our 25,920 year processional cycle. Let's rotate our clock 22 and a half more degrees. At 6 a.m., the red sphere has now rotated 90 degrees, the yellow sphere has done 180 degrees, and the green sphere has made a complete rotation, and the blue sphere has made two complete rotations. Notice how the green, blue, and yellow spheres are in a line, and red is the only one offset. 
The sphere along the purple path is currently green, symbolizing the alpha in brain state, the green ray energy centers, the tetra in, and the end of Aquarius and start of the Capricorn. The transition from green to blue is approximately 7 a.m., which is shown in the second drawing. At 7.30 a.m., we are now in the beta in brain harmony, the sat in yuga, the age of the Capricorn, and blue ray energy centers. It is now 9 a.m., and we continue to drift inwards. The red sphere has rotated 135 degrees, the yellow sphere has done 315 degrees, the green sphere is at 180 degrees from center, and the blue sphere is at zero. Again, the center of our influence is the center of mass of these tidally locked spheres and remains in the beta state. Sat Yuga, blue ray energy centers, and we are now in the age of Sagittarius. In the drawing representing 1030 AM, we are now drifting back outward slightly, and we will call this our first beta out. This relates to Sat In, the age of Scorpio, and the blue ray energy centers. At noon, our red sphere has orbited 180 degrees. The yellow sphere has made one complete circle. The green sphere has now done two complete circles, and the blue sphere has done four complete circles. In essence, the only difference between midnight and noon is the location of the red sphere. The alignment of the yellow, green, and blue pull us back outwards. However, the red sphere's location causes us to not fully drift back into the yellow and red centers. Our sphere along the purple path will be green during this time. This time relates to the transition from sat in to sat out, the age of Libra, a dip into the green ray energy center, and may be a great time for a quick nap. The next drawing represents 1.30 p.m., and shows how we re-enter the beta state before drifting back outwards. This would relate to sat out, the transition from age of Libra to the age of Virgo, and the blue ray energy centers. At 3 p.m., our red sphere has now done 225 degrees of rotation. The yellow sphere is at 90 degrees, the green sphere is at 180, and the blue sphere is at zero. Our center of influence remains in the blue energy centers as we are now drifting outwards into less dense realms, consisting of lower vibrations. Both these drawings represent sat out, beta out, and the age of Virgo with transition into the age of Leo. At 6 p.m., we are in transition from the blue to the green spheres. One thing to note is that this is the same orientation as 6 a.m. The only difference is the location of the red sphere. This time relates to alpha out, tetra out, green ray energy centers, and the transition from the age of Leo into the age of Cancer. Our red sphere has done 270 degrees of rotation. The yellow is at 180, and the green and blue spheres are at 0 degrees. At 7.30 p.m., we remain in alpha out, tetra out, green ray energy centers, and are fully in the age of Cancer. At 9 p.m., we are nearing the transition from alpha out into theta out. This also symbolizes the transition from green ray energy centers into yellow ray energy centers and the switching from tetra out into dwapara out. This is also the age of Gemini. Our red sphere has done 315 degrees, the yellow sphere is at 270 degrees, the green sphere is at 180, and the blue sphere is at 0 degrees. Our center of influence is in the green. At 10.30 p.m., we have now transitioned from alpha out into theta out, we are now in the yellow ray energy centers, Dwapara out, and entering the age of Taurus. This is the moment when we begin to dream and the vibration of Earth system slows dramatically. It is as if the Earth goes to sleep during this time. The orbit then begins again as the tidally locked fluid of the fifth dimension whirlpools inwards. For the human circadian rhythm, this takes 24 hours to complete. For the Earth's precession, it takes 25,920 years. We can now see how these systems are forever intertwined as all experiences are secondary and emerge from this vortex. A bouncing orbit. One thing to note is that the path drawn out by the purple sphere is not a single ellipse. It consists of two ellipses, one big orbit and one tight orbit. The two orbits in combination are what give us a full cycle of the yugas, ages of the zodiac, and circadian rhythm. Influences on life. Just like the human and the individual cells that create the body undergo changes in function according to the circadian rhythm, so does the planet during this processional cycle. 
This implies that humans, being the white blood cells of the universe, will also undergo changes in function within the Earth system.